Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is John, the RPG Lord. Today we're going to learn how to create an underwater campaign. One of the more challenging things to create for a GM is a campaign or an adventure that takes place underwater. Many GMs shy away from that and the reason for that is they are a little bit more difficult to plan. Number one, when you have combat, you are not operating in a plane, but you're operating in a 3D space, meaning the creature can be in front of you, next to you, above or below you. But my answer to you is do not shy away from that. Things like that, for the most part, work out or you can make it up on the spot. Now, when creating your environments, Obviously, you have to have a good storyline, like with everything else. But the first thing, when you design an ocean campaign, is answer the question. What is the temperature of the water going to be like? Is it going to be a tropical ocean? Or is it going to be Arctic? Or is it going to be a dark lake? So that's the first thing. Then, remember the depth. Is this only a few feet below the surface? instance a temple that is half sunken into the water or is it hundreds of feet below the water once you go deeper into the water it gets darker and the pressure increases so that should be something that you figure into and then of course there are currents currents can range from anywhere from zero current to you're going to be sucked in like a vacuum also important to remember and then of course there's visibility. Water can be crystal clear and you can see for hundreds of feet or you can have extremely murky water that you can't see your own hand in front of your eyes. So an Arctic Ocean will be different than a tropical coral reef, an abysmal trench will be very dark so maybe you have bioluminescent creatures there. So plan that into your campaign. Then what's gonna be underneath the ocean. Well, we know that the majority of the ocean is empty and that any life and any activity happens along the coastlines and along the bottom. What can you see there? You can have volcanic vents, you can have kelp forests, you can have sunken ships, undersea caves, under city societies, how about a dome where a society lives in that is actually filled with air but it's at the bottom of the ocean. All of this can be included and you can set it up like any other map. Now to give your campaign a little bit more life you want to fill it with aquatic races and monsters. So what can you have there? You can have Triton, Sagwagen, Murpho, Kraken, whatever it is. I'll go into more detail in a bit. Another thing you have to worry about, that's my next point, is breathing. If you go by D&D 5th edition rules, then a creature can hold its breath for a number of minutes equals to this constitution modifier. So it, let's say your constitution modifier is plus 2, you can hold your breath for 2 minutes. And one thing you have to remember, breathing. If you want them, if you want to focus more on the storyline, then I encourage you give them either access to spells or to items that let them breathe on the water. Hulk of Manta Ray maybe or something like that. But it is important that if they constantly worry about breathing on the water that your campaign might be very slow. You should do keep that in mind. Maybe a potion of underwater breathing, anything. Now, here it comes to combat. Combat in an underwater campaign is, for land creatures, such like our adventure party, very limited. So some of the, uh, of the rarer races have a natural swimming speed. So they are not affected by that, but pretty much every attack roll, unless you're using a dagger, javelin, short uh, sword, or spear, or trident, has disadvantage. So keep that also in mind. Distance weapons get the disadvantage, unless they're crossbow, net, 
or any kind of thrown weapon like it. And of course, the favorite fireball underwater is quite less effective. So when you plan your encounters and you look for challenging rating, keep that in mind. Your players will constantly be at the disadvantage. As long as they're on the water, they will have a disadvantage. Now, let's talk about societies. With any society, you have to come up with what motivates them. Let's start with this. Where do they live? Maybe they have built a city in the coral reef, or they inhabit underwater caves, or as I said previously, there's a dome. Think about what kind of economy they have, where they get their food from, where do they get their currency from, what do they use as currency. Maybe they use seashells and your adventurers only have gold pieces. That could be an interesting way to come by some underwater currency, so to speak. What are their biggest enemies? Are there any factions? Maybe you have two factions of merfolk that will fight against each other and your heroes are drawn into that conflict. Maybe they get attacked by gigantic kraken on a regular basis and your heroes have to defend them. All of these are options that you can do. What are they trying to achieve is the key question here. Why do they exist and how do they keep on existing and thriving on the water? Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure you like, comment, share and subscribe. I see you in the next vi video. Have a nice day and remember there's only one RPG.